class, um, I want to give you a little more information about the Diels-Alder reaction, um, mainly about um, what's called pi stacking and something else that is called uh, that it, that deals with um, molecules that are chiral that might help you a little bit with your pre lab. First of all, um, let's go back and redefine what we mean by endo. Okay, so endo, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Endo is when the inner, this is very important, substituents of the diene, and these could be substituents or hydrogens, that's important, are trans to the substituents or substituents on the dienophile. Okay, that's important. A couple days we kind of switched around how we were saying that, and I think that's a good way to think about it. Um, I'm not sure what happened to my eraser, which has disappeared. Did Henry take my eraser? I don't know. No. I, I don't know, I'm just going to get a tissue or something. Hold on. Not a professional fellow. No. Yes, he did. Henry took the eraser. All right, class, well, you'll love this. Henry took my eraser. Everybody will want to see Henry. Since Henry disrupted the whole film, he gets to be the star of the film. So Henry took my eraser away. There's Henry. Everybody wanted to see how big Henry is now. Look how big he is. Anyway, the little scamp took my eraser. So this is really important because... We had a little confusion about this. So I'm saying the inner substituents or hydrogens of the diene have to be trans to the substituents on the dienophile in the new ring. But this is also true in the transition state. Okay? Okay, so keep that in mind. Of course, exo is just the opposite of that. Okay, it would just be the exact opposite. You'd say cis instead of trans. Okay, so the place we were going with this was that we were looking at cyclohexadiene as it was reacting with maleic anhydride. And I told you that the maleic anhydride could come in either from the top or the bottom to fulfill its role. So it could come in like that or... This seemed to work better. The days, a couple days that I did this, this seemed to work a little better. People understood this better. It could come in like this or this and have its orbitals overlap properly. I can't even draw the orbitals. And this same thing could happen on the top face. Okay. Now I'm using the bottom face because it's a little easier to follow. When the when the the, the diene dienophile is facing this way such that its pi system is underneath the pi system of the diene, that is endo, okay? When the dienophile is sitting such that its pi system, meaning these substituent groups, are sitting under the, the substituents or the inner groups of the, di the diene, that's exo, okay? So notice, these are cis with respect to each other, in this case, they are trans with respect to each other. Inner positions, substituents. I hope that's starting to make sense because I know it was problematic in class last week. Okay, so what we're saying is the endo attack is more favorable. Why? The reason the endo attack is considered to be more favorable is because it is considered to be the kinetic... Um, the kinetically favored reaction. And what does this mean? This means this is the lowest, this is believed to be the lowest energy transition state for the reaction. Remember our symbol for transition state? TS? Okay, so what does that mean? 
this is believed to be the lowest energy transition state. The Diels Alder is a one step process. We're saying here that this approach goes through the lowest energy transition state. So, what's so great about it? Well, the theory is something that's called pi stacking. Okay? What is pi stacking? Pi stacking is when the orbital requirements of the reaction are met, which means the p orbital of this bond is overlapping with this p orbital, the p orbital of this dienophile is overlapping with the other end of the diene. Okay, but you also have some additional pi overlap between the electron withdrawing groups on the substituent of the dienophile and these leftover p orbitals that become the double bond in the final product. And it's thought that stacking of these pi systems somehow lowers the energy level of the transition state. In other words, these interactions are favorable. These interactions occur in other systems, and they're very well known in biological systems. Um, you know, there's a process known as intercalation that occurs with DNA, and, it's, and it is explained by this kind of a phenomenon. So it's thought that when it turns this way, it gets that interaction. Now again, look at the opposite. If I turn this around the other way, which is exo. Oh, this marker is gone. But when I turn it around, so it's exo like this, notice I can get the overlap between these orbitals, but these orbitals are sitting over the saturated part of the ring, so you don't get that pi stacking effect. Now, it turns out that very often the exo product is more stable. And what does that mean? Um, reactions that are under thermodynamic control, and we're going to keep talking about this. Are reactions that are not controlled by the transition state, but are controlled by the final product stability. So in reactions that are under thermodynamic control, the reaction is actually equilibrating. Perhaps, let's say there's another higher energy transition state that leads to a lower, let's say this is the exo transition state, but this is the exo product. If the reaction is actually equilibrating, eventually mo most products will crop up in that lowest energy well in the reaction profile. Um, so the, so the, the conclusion would be, since I've told you in class that most Diels alders give endo product, that would indicate that most Diels alder reactions are under kinetic control. Okay? That means you're getting the product that's formed fastest, which means the reaction is not equilibrating. I want you to think a little bit for class tomorrow about what would what equilibration entails. What would it entail for for us to get over the higher barrier to get to the lower energy product if that lower energy product is indeed the exo product. The other thing I wanted to do, the last thing I wanted to do is just talk a little bit about, well I have this drawn up here, talk a little bit about attacking and what happens to the molecule. I was trying to do this with my models kind of unsuccessfully last week. But again, say this does come in from the endo approach like this. Okay, so this is endo. So this is again a kinetic approach. What I want you to think about happening to the molecule is this is a side view of the molecule. We're looking at it from the side. The diene is sitting like this and the dienophile is sitting like this. Okay, it's a side view, not an aerial view. So what's going to happen? Well, as it starts to react, this bridge is going to start to bend up like that. Okay, bonds are going to start to form between, and this you can look at this again if you had trouble taking notes on this in class. Bonds are going to start to form between, um, I just drew this in an extremely bizarre way. Okay. Wait. Don't even look at that. Don't copy that. Bonds are going to start to form like this, okay? So this is my, um, I think I just drew the most bizarre structure ever. Okay, this is my um, dienophile coming in underneath. 
right? What bonds are breaking? All these bonds are breaking. This bond is breaking here. So what's going to happen is as this comes in endo stacked, right? Pi stacked underneath the pi system, this bridge is going to start to come up, right? So the bridge starts to come up. So if we were following this in time, this would eventually look like this. Once the bonds form, that's in the back. And notice what was the malachian hydride is now underneath the ring. It's kind of like hanging down underneath the ring. I always tell people this is like a basket and this is hanging down off the ring. Now, if you were to perceive this from an aerial perspective, in other words, if you were looking down on it, what would it look like? It would look like this. You would see the ring. You might not have as much perspective on the ring. And you'd say, oh, what is coming toward me? What's coming toward you is the bridge. So the handle would be coming toward you. And what would be going away from you? The malachian hydride ring. Like that. Okay, now. What do you have to add into this? You have to add in some stereochemistry. So what if the molecule to begin with is chiral? So for example, supposing there's an there's a isopropyl group sticking up like that, okay? What would happen? Well, the same thing would happen. The bridge would come up, the isopropyl group would move over here because let's say this is coming up, it's sort of coming up towards you and there's a hydrogen coming down. That's what you would have. If you're looking at that from an aerial perspective, where is that? This would be over to the left. And what I mean by that is it would be sticking up and over to the left. All right, so um, I hope that helps a little bit. What we're going to do this in lab this week is recrystallize these products. And we are going to start talking about the theory behind next week's lab, even though it might be a little ahead of class, because I want you to start thinking about some things. Okay, so I'll see you in class. Sorry about the big Henry disruption. Thanks, bye.